Hello, I, <coughs> I'm Paul Pluter for the Paul Pluter channel, fuckers. And today, today I'm doing some paid reviews because I don't do shit for free. 20 US dollars, 20 US dollars, fuckers, you nasty fuckers. 20 US fuckeroonies, fuckeroonies, you fuckers, fuckers. And uh, I'll make a video for you. So, uh, first one in the mailbags in fuckers. And this is from Nick. Hi, Archie. Been a fan for years. I've enclosed $30 for a watch review and advice for the next fucker. For the next purchase fucker, not going to give nasty pricks at PayPal any commission. Oh, he gave me 30 Aussie instead of... Yeah, cool, cool. I'm 25. I'm... Fra I'm... From fabulous Briz Vegas, that's Brisbane, Brisbane, and one of those nasty pricks in finance. Ooh. Ah! <laughs> My small but growing collection consists of a Rolex 1500, a Zenith 2542, and an Omega Speedmaster Man on the Fucking Moon. Anyway, for years I've always had my heart set on a set on a face Rolex Daytona in stainless steel. I think he missed out white face or black face. Anyhow, <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. However, starting to starting to looking into the market, all the different types is quite confusing. I.e., should I go vintage Zenith movement? I do love Zenith and vintage. Should I buy retail? Should I consider two-tone? At the end of the day, what is the best bang per buck in the Daytona market? Regards, Nick. Thank you so much. P.S. If you're ever up for a scotch in Bris Vegas, do hit me up. Nick! I, I, I'm available. No worries. What are you doing tomorrow night, Nick? Nick? <coughs> okay, let's have a talk here, Nick. Let's have a talk. Okay, okay, Nick, this is cool. Okay, so um, you got to, okay, let's have a look there. We've got Rolex 1500. That's a uh, smallish size date. You know, they're 34 mil. That's okay. I, I, I accept that. That's a vintage, vintage piece. You got a Zenith 2542. It's an automatic Zenith three hander, I think, from memory. And you got an Amiga Speedmaster Man on a fucking moon. Beautiful, beautiful. That's a nice little bit of vintage. The Zenith and the Rolex and the Amiga. Yeah, got a little yin and yang. That's cool. It's a good little collection. You're only 25 for fuck's sake. Look, my advice to you is, as far as the Daytona goes, man, they are fucking expensive. They are fucking expensive fuckers. And I got to tell you the truth. My honest advice is, <laughs> okay, so you're looking at a reasonable price. We're not talking about plastic Daytonas. Plastic is being, you know, those really, really rare ones. Plastic, you know, they're fucking good. But, okay, so we're talking sapphire crystal Daytonas. What would I go for? i got to be completely honest with you. Completely 100% honest with you. Go for a steel stunner. Two-tone are for nerds. Two-tones for nerds, okay? Two-tone, I'm just saying that because i got a few friends of mine who got a two-tone data. I like to tease you cunts. I like to give you cunts a good stare. That's right. Two-tone is cool. I, I think myself, my own opinion, I really, 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 really like it in steel, but I reckon that is the sweet spot. My advice to you, if you're in Australia, get in touch with Kenny Nguyen. Get on the fucking phone to Kenny Nguyen. He'll get you one. Uh, what would I purse? Now, if you were going for the Zenith one, if you're going two-tone, obviously some of the, the later ones don't have the gold centerpiece, which I think doesn't really fucking matter. I reckon go... Personally, I reckon I'd be going Zenith Movement Steel Sunner. I reckon that's the smart money. They're a little bit undervalued because everyone wants the new ceramic J toner. They want the fucking ceramic. Well, let those cunters get the ceramic one. You pick up the bargains. 
in the steel department. I mean, years ago, all the boys ran off to woodwork and metalwork. I could see the fucking Chinese were going to fucking slaughter the market in cheap disposable furniture. But being able to cook, being able to sew, meant I was with the wenches. So I kind of you got to do what the... You don't want to follow the sheeple, the herd. You don't want to follow the herd. I got my first breast look. First nipple look. That's right, in home economics, fuckers. Now, um, yeah, I, I'd seriously go for the Zenith. It's a tie-in for that ugly fucking vintage one you've got. Ha ha ha. I'm only joking. I'm only fucking joking. Go for... I don't think it matters. You can do no wrong. When it comes to Daytonas, you can do no wrong. Talk to Kenny Nguyen. No cunt. Lang Langford's in Brisbane. Though they, wouldn't, they wouldn't really be much help. they got limited stock. You really wouldn't be helping you much there. Get in touch with... Oh, Hourglass. Look, get in touch with Kenny Nguyen. Get in touch with Kenny Nguyen. And fucking buy one. They are a cool watch. Don't, you know, people say, oh, it's not good that, well, it retains its value. Its money is safe with a Daytona. I, would I go Daytona? Well, I've got to fucking tell you, cunters, you know, when I had a small inheritance that came my way, I actually, you know, I, I wasn't a fucking, I wasn't, I wasn't that well off at all. I was fucking... I was fucking on the bones of my fucking ass. I was driving taxis trying to get a bit of quid coin. And I, I sold my watch collection off to get my white gold Patek, the 5107. I had, um, I sold off my, my Breitling Navi timer. I sold off my Amiga Speedmaster. Man on the fucking moon. I sold my two-tone 16233 with diamond dial off. I sold those three to put the money in to get the fucking, the Calatra. It's a big. Big expensive watch. The contenders, I thought if I didn't get the Patek, I was going to go for a, either a President, solid gold Rolex, pre President, or, or a steel Daytona. <laughs> I thought, fuck, steel Daytona, man, I could really, it's just a no compromise. It's one of these watches you get. Yeah, you got to pay fucking retail for it. Yeah, get over it. Get over it. Fucking... It's just a cool fucking thing to have. I mean, how many fucking things in life as a man can you have that are so cool, so fucking sexy? You got your money back any fucking time you want. I mean, it's just... The Daytona is so cool. It is so fucking cool. Uh, do, would I buy one myself? I'd probably buy a fucking Breguet. You know, they really missed my fucking Breguet Type 20. I wouldn't buy one new. Ooh, no. 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 But I'd buy a Daytona. Would I get a Daytona? They're fucking cool. I mean, fuck me dead. You know, my, my, one day if someone said to me, Uncle Archie, you know, a fan came along. I want to give you a watch. A steel Daytona would fucking rock. It would rock, man. It would fucking blow the shit out to pieces. Steel Daytona. Fuck, they're cool. They are cool. So yeah, definitely do it. Any anyone is fine. Anyone is fine. Don't get too caught up. Do I go Zenith? Do I go Rob? Fuck it. Anyone is fine. White or black? Fuck me, Dad. <laughs> what would I go for, white or black? If I had a choice there, I'd be. I'd, I'd follow the fucking sheeple and go black. Okay, but white is so cool too. <laughs> Go black. Go black if you get a choice. Go black and it's worth slightly more. Because I'm a dealer. Wheeler fucking dealer. Daytona. So cool. Man, that could be one watch. Fucking wear for your lifetime. What a fucking cool thing. When you're dead, right? When you're dead, right? Whatever it is. You know, brain aneurysm. You know, as Marky says, the only respectful way to die is an airplane crash. What a fucking cool way to die with a fucking Daytona on your wrist. Fuck, that's cool. It's just so cool. So fucking cool. The Daytona, what a cool choice. And I, 
I think, fuck it, save every fucking cent you can do whatever you need to do to get it. Fuck, it's cool. You can wear that fucking thing for the rest of your fucking life. I'm Archie Luxury. Tell me what you miserable, nasty fuckers think of that. Cut! Cunters! We specialize in the repair of Rolex and Patek Philippe watches. We've been doing the same thing for more than 25 years. We have a Rolex technician certified by Rolex who actually used to work for the company for many years, like if we're doing the work on the factory. We completely disassemble the watch and we put it to work, like brand new condition. When you get a pre-owned watch, it's like if you get in a brand new unit. The only difference is the money. What a fucking boring collection.